Hey guys, the system, and this is FDB University. Hope everyone is well. Have a busy day. I myself, really good one. And, uh, in between episodes, I went ahead and uh, worked on our greenhouse here. So greenhouse is uh, pretty up a little bit. It's not a just big block of uh, andesia anymore at all, actually. So went ahead and used a bunch of mineral, used some yellow terracotta, more of those inverted lights because uh, I'm a big fan of them. I actually use them in our base as well. I wanted the mineral to match the roof of this as well. Just happy with it. And did a little bit of fences. It does nothing too special. Whole bunch of that really nice clear glass. And uh, everything looks pretty snazzy. I also have all of our actual windmills in here too. It just seems to fit the uh, kind of, you know what I mean? The uh, agricultural kind of thing going on. Keeping air, in the, air inside the uh, greenhouse, I suppose. The air is moving around. Something like that. I'm making stuff up. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, name a rat here. You know, we have a new patron. It is uh, Razzle Dazzle. As you know, I'm naming rats in this series after uh, Patreon. So Razzle Dazzle, welcome aboard. Thank you very much for the support. It is much appreciated. And uh, this is going to be a rat right here. You're going to be a little brown guy. Let's go ahead and uh, toss that right there. That looks good. And uh, you're going to be a chef, actually. I'm going to put you to work here. I made you a hat. So you have a nice little chef hat. Look at you. Just look at you. <laughs> there you go. Go ahead and do that. I think I have a hopper here and a chest. We're just going to get you set up. Like I said, I'm going to end up making a better area for this, but uh, for right now, this is going to have to do. Go ahead and grab you, bring you back here, pop you on this hopper, hopefully. There you go. Go ahead and break that. Get a chest in there. This guy doesn't have to do very much. I actually haven't named this one either. I need a name for that one. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, grab some food here. Aubergine and bam. So this guy will just smelt down food. He's like a furnace, basically. Um, the only problem is you can't really automatically put stuff into him. So at least I don't know how. If anyone knows a way of doing that, uh, let me know. But, uh, yeah, I don't think he'll respond to picking things up from a chest. So if I went here, it said take items from a chest. And gave him some of this and of that in there. Awesome. Go ahead and, uh, I guess it would be... Wonder... See, I, I wouldn't know what to set this one to. Anyway, this one I also can make a special food. It's called the uh, Confet Bialdi. If you go to here too, Confet. I'm not going to make it though. And I'll explain why. It's a really good food there. You can see it gives you insane saturation and insane uh, actual food. But, and it's really easy to make actually. It's not that bad. Oh, actually they upped it. You didn't used to have a block of gold in it. Um, the problem is it turns your screen yellow. <laughs> turns your screen yellow and that's no good, right? So it gives you like a re regeneration effect. But you also have yellow screen, so I don't want to use that. So a lot of people are telling me to use it, but uh, that's really not good for videos at all whatsoever. And not really good for anyone who wants a yellow screen for like two minutes or whatever it is. So anyway, that's cool. That's awesome. Pretty much all we're going to do here, I think. We've got uh, some more of the uh, Mahosukai to do today. So we're going to jump to that, I think. Uh, which one should we do first, actually? Maybe, what do I have in here? Oops. Oh, I didn't mean to do this one right now. <laughs> this one's a familiar. Let's go into here for a sec. No, nope, not there. Let's go into here. There you go. Head to our quest here. Anyway, we got the uh, familiar. Why is he so familiar? There you go. The squirrel familiar uh, will spawn and bind a familiar to you. Familiars will load the chunk they're in and will let you know if he sees interesting players and mobs. So this guy just, yeah, he has uh, not much functions by himself. He seems to wander too. He doesn't follow you around, I don't think. He doesn't really follow you around. He just kind of hangs out there, right? But he has some cool functions there if he has some other scrolls. So I have this one here. It's called Familiar Exchange and uh, Recall Familiar. So I actually want to move him, right? So what I'm going to do is uh, let's head in this building. We can do two things, right? So let's get him into this one, I guess. Go ahead and go to here. Oh, not that. Let's go ahead and go into here. There we go. And it has this weird kind of teleport mechanic, right? So you have this one, Scroll of Familiar Exchange. If I actually use this one right now, so right there, sweet. And uh, just kind of head to the center, I guess. There you go. Puts me where the familiar was, and our familiar should be in this building. <laughs> the only thing I'm worried about the familiar, I didn't want to use him out here, because he may die to the power lines. <laughs> That's definitely something that'll happen, probably. But uh, he's now in the building, so that is pretty cool. He's got a little birdhouse i guess he lives in here now although he could probably get out the roof and uh the other one is the recall like right so what you do with that one is you can go anywhere and then kind of call him back into the area you want him right so i could have him down here which is probably where i'm actually going to keep him there you go and boom he's just uh there so you can use them to teleport around basically so i could go somewhere 
pull him there, you know what I mean? Recall him, go somewhere else, and teleport back to that spot. So he's kind of a weird little teleport system. He's actually pretty cool, actually. There's also another squirrel, too, to look through his eyes, but I don't really see the purpose <laughs> at all. Maybe on a PvP, uh, PP? No, PvP server or something. So that is pretty cool. Also went ahead and made another attuned gen, uh, a gem, I guess, diamond is what it is, and uh, filled it up. So we have another one filled up there. And actually, while we're here, let's go ahead and grab some stuff. We're gonna go ahead and make another weapon here uh, from this mod, actually. And uh, it's actually really cool. Pretty pumped for it. Do I actually need another obelisk? I might as well. Let's go ahead and grab that. Let's do this. Awesome. Go ahead, probably need a flu tank as well. So we'll do that. Go ahead and grab experience obelisk. I have to say it's great not getting stuff thrown into our inventory. And uh, we're also gonna make an enchanter here as well. So that is cool. Awesome. Let's head out this way. And uh, let's actually go grab all our experience as well. Let's do that. Actually, maybe before we do this next one, we'll go ahead and make this one here, the treasury projection gauntlet. I figured to just make the squirrels too, because you guys know how the squirrels are made now. You really don't uh, need to see it. Anyway, we got 150 levels in there. Let's go up to main. Do I have an anvil and everything else? Yeah, we have everything else we need. So that is cool. And actually, since it's night, let's go do the gauntlet one. So let's grab this. I think the squirrel's in here, right? So we got uh, treasury projection gauntlet. Let's go ahead and grab that one. And then we should be able to just use this one. This one's just going to create an item for us. So let's do that. And we get this here. It's the treasury projection gauntlet, which is uh, pretty sweet. Uh, where should I put this? Let's go back to our other house for a second. Sweet. This is the one I was talking about yesterday that will pull uh, weapons from a ender chest, right? So I have another one right here. If I go ahead and pop that down, go ahead and throw in our sword. There you go. I think we can use this to uh, kill mobs. So let's try it out. So where is a mob that we can kind of get there? There's one right over there. There's actually a Zombo. It's gonna see if we can shoot swords at them. No, it's not aiming very good. There you go. <laughs> and there you go. So yeah, it just shoots a whole bunch of the swords um, from a list that's inside that chest. So if I put a bunch of powerful, powerful swords in that chest or something, it would be able to shoot those swords into the world. And these aren't actual items. They're just like ghost items, right? But uh, let's see if we can get this guy. It's actually hard to shoot it if they're walking right on you. This one's a little weird. I think this one's better for like long range, actually. Something like, uh, no, you still see me, don't you? Yeah, it's really hard to target this one. This one is uh, rough. <laughs> I think it uses a considerable amount of mana, too. Does good damage if it hits, but yeah. Yeah, we just use 3,000 uh, uh, mana, just like that, actually, which is... uh. Pretty, pretty sad. <laughs> hey, wait. Let's go ahead and sleep real quick. And we're going to go ahead and actually make a new weapon, like I said. How did my familiar get up here already? Anyway, I don't want him to get outside because I know he'll get burnt to death uh, by our wires. Because I get burnt to death by them all the time. Well, not death, but enough. Uh, so, yeah, we got one more spell we're going to do here. So, let's go ahead and get that done. Sweet. And I'll probably read the quest for this one because it's actually a little weird. It's actually going to make this for us, the Caliburn, which is uh, pretty awesome. Let's go ahead. Uh, where's the Caliburn one? There we go. Caliburn is a magical sword that the undead fear, causing them to flee. Right-clicking will pull the undead and the caster towards the other, uh, towards each other. So that actually makes the undead, so zombies and skeletons run away from you. Uh, get a Caliburn to use the Blood Circle of Power Consolidation. Actually makes a big lake, so you don't want to use it like near your base because it's going to destroy your base. And uh, yeah. You have to go ahead and throw an enchanted sword in there, preferably the smite. Uh, we'll have uh, we'll take five thousand when you throw the sword in, but you get your caliburn. And depending on the levels of smite, determines how strong the sword is. And you can kind of enchant it again, so it'll actually come out as a caliburn without enchants. You can put smite on again and do it again to make it stronger and stronger. It's actually pretty crazy. So anyway, I want to go ahead and uh, make one of that. Let's go ahead and do that. I need like two blocks here. Let's go ahead and do this. Figured this would be a good area for the water. So we'll do that. Maybe, maybe like uh, right here. I want to keep it kind of central. That's good. Uh, this one has to be done with just a circle, like a blood circle. I forgot my dagger too. Let's actually go grab that real quick. And uh, yeah, make our little lake here. Then we'll move on to something else, I suppose. Go ahead and grab you. I'm actually really enjoying this mod. There just isn't a ton to it yet. It's, it's a mod that I think is kind of in progress. Uh, there is more than this, though. Actually, we have one more thing to do after this. So, anyway, let's go ahead and uh, use that. Go ahead and uh, I guess that's good enough. Here we go. The spell uh, recipe is this right here. So, go ahead and grab you. So, it'll be diamond, diamond, emerald. 
So diamond, diamond, emerald. And uh, I think that'll just start working. Yeah, there we go. And it's going to start making a little lake here. <laughs> Which is kind of neat how it does that. Awesome. Actually covered that up perfectly. Actually bigger than this. Actually put a little bit underground. But now we just have a lake of this work murky water, right? So that is cool. Uh, hopefully I can get out of it. There we go. Let's go ahead and uh, set up a little uh, enchanting area here. We we'll want our enchanter, which lets us just craft a specific kind of books there. We'll need our experience, so let's grab that. And uh, we'll need an anvil, right? So let's do that. I believe I threw some rotten flesh in here, which is what we need for smite, right? So let's go ahead and grab you. I think I grabbed more than we needed. And uh, I guess we also need lapis, right? So let's grab some lapis and some more lapis. So anyway, that's good. So we go in here and grab, uh, I don't know how many levels it is. I need to look. Let's go into here. So you can see here, kind of, you can just make any enchantment book you pretty much want there. Uh, smite, there we go. It's going to be 60 and 12 and uh, one of these book, books and quills. Let's go ahead and uh, get on the right one here. I need, uh, oh, I didn't grab a sword. We need a sword or something, right? Let's get a sword real quick. Doesn't even matter which one. We're just going to use one to uh, do the initial sword, right? Then after that, we have a sword. So let's grab a iron sword, I suppose. Let's do that. That looks good. Hit up this way. Maybe that'll open. <laughs> Maybe it won't. Awesome. And then we need to make the book, right? So it would be this and this, and then a book and uh, 30 levels. I don't want to do this either. I want to store all that in there to just pull out 30 so it doesn't do it inefficiently. So we've got a smite five. Might as well do that a few more times, actually. So do that, that. We'll need uh, 30. Sweet. Go ahead and grab that. Then 30. <laughs> there we go. Do it one more time. And uh, that right there. Now, every time we go through this cycle of leveling up the sword, it's going to take 5,000 of our mana. So we can do it three times right now, basically. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this on here. Uh, we'll need five levels. Let's go. That's good enough. And uh, get the sword in there. That's good. Pop that there. Smite level five. And now we're ready to go, right? So all we have to do is take this sword, throw it inside here. There you go. Jump in the water. And there's our sword. This is the Kelly Burn. So that is pretty cool. It's pretty cool looking, actually, too. So there you go. Got a quest done. A Dawnbreaker, which is uh, pretty amazing. And uh, yeah, it's just a really cool looking sword, right? So anyway, that's awesome. It is 11 damage right now. I don't know why the durability went down on it, but either way, I guess that's fine. Uh, we can go ahead and do this again, though, right? So we can go ahead and grab this. Grab that. We need uh, five levels. So I should probably remember that. There you go. Sweet and uh, sweet. There you go. It's up to... Uh, it's still 11 damage, right? <laughs> I haven't done anything yet. Throw it in there. 5,000 more mana. There you go. Grab our sword. It is now 16. And I don't know how many times we could do this, but uh, yeah, we can do it a bunch. So let's do that. We need five. I said I was going to remember that. I didn't. Go ahead and do that net. Awesome. And uh, this should get it up to uh, another five levels, just like that. And uh, now we're too short. Not that it matters that much. I'll do this over time, actually, as uh, as we go. And uh, it's up to 21. We got a 21 damage sword that will make skeletons run away from us. Make uh, zombies run away from us. I think pigmen too. They'll just straight up run away. And we can pull them towards us. So it is uh, really cool. So really cool item all around. I may wait until nighttime, show you this, and then we'll move on to something else because this is pretty rad. Actually, before we do that, since we're waiting towards the night, for the nighttime, let's go into here. We got one more scroll in here. This is scroll of the uh, Mystic Eyes of the Face Sight. If going to here, I guess, let's go to Ley Lines. There you go. Ley Lines are passed. I don't really understand this mechanic yet, so I'm going to show this to you. Maybe someone knows about it. But Ley Lines are passed that connect certain points throughout the world. Being near a Ley Line or a Ley Point increases your mana regeneration. That's pretty basic. And Elytra Speed. Fine. There's Fays that are supposed to be around them, I think. That's why it talks about Fays here. The Fay are spirit-like creatures that spawn along Ley Lines and are attracted to magic being cast. You can breed with them, uh, breed them with any powder, powdered catalyst. So you can breed them, right? You can only uh, see ley lines at Fey using a scroll of the mystic eyes and face sight. So the Fey's actually drop a material to be able to make some of the other stuff, right? So like this, and then there's the uh, this thing here. I guess it talks about that. Uh, there's these uh, mana circuits which are supposed to be used in like some kind of automation with it, and there's also like a battery. So to be able to get that stuff, I need to be able to get that stuff, but I don't know how to find these phase. So if I go ahead and use this roll, right? Do, did I actually use it? 
I did not. Let's actually uh, do that a little longer. Or maybe I don't have this uh, actual spell selected. There you go. It's actually selected now. Sweet. And I've already done this uh, uh, once, right? So down here, you can see here, we got one of those fey lines. Then you come along here and actually right at our um, thing, whatever this is called. This is our greenhouse. There's actually like a central point, like right here. And I haven't seen anything here. So I've tried this a few times. I've never seen a fey. I think they're just supposed to be like glowing balls of light. But how would you even know they're here? Which is, I, I don't understand, right? So not really sure how this mechanic works. For like, if you didn't use that scroll, because it only lasts so long, right? It's already gone. You only see the Fey when you have that turned on. You should get some kind of indication when they're here. And I'm not sure what it is. So if someone knows that, let me know, because uh, that might be helpful. But uh, Oh, we actually get two more smite books. So once I have the mana, I'll be able to get that up another 10 damage. That'll be uh, 31 damage right there. So anyway, that's cool. I'll wait till night time. We'll go uh, chase some things with our sword. Then we'll move on to something else. And okay, it's about two nights later there. Actually, I was going to do one night, but uh, it was two because the plague rack came, gave me the plague. And yeah, it takes like five minutes for that to go away. I went to go to my cow, right? So I went to the cow over there. This is like, hey, I wonder if milk works. No, all I did was give the cow the plague and I had to kill it because I would have gave plague to all the rest of my rats and stuff. So yeah, plague is bad, man. Really don't go near any of your animals if you have the plague. So that is a thing. Also went ahead and threw uh, Sharpness 5 out here. Because I saw, I was reading the book while I was waiting. Uh, you could put Sharpness 5 or Smite on there. I didn't notice that. But you can't put both on the sword. Only take one. So I can go ahead and get this leveled up again, though. So might as well, right? So let's go ahead and throw that in there. Awesome. And uh, it is now a, what is that? 32.2. Maybe that's the max. I wonder if that's the max there. That might be. Let's go ahead and uh, I have a smite there as well, obviously, because I was trying to do the uh, bookie thing. Go ahead and do that. Grab that. 32.2. I just want to see what happens when the, we throw it in there. Here we go. Go to sword. Awesome. Go ahead and grab that. No, it went up to 37. So sharpness adds less levels, definitely. So smite is definitely the way to go. Okay, so we know now. <laughs> Because, yeah, five levels of uh, sharpness only gave it 1.2. Is that what it was? Something like that? That was really odd, actually, the numbering. It's also really weird, the durability on this, how it's always 998. Anyway, let's go find a mob. I want to show you how it works real quick. Then we're probably going to do some uh, trials from deep mob learning and work towards getting our OP armor. So, anyway, let's uh, head over here. Here we go. You'll see it, like, pulled him, but he's running away, right? But it pulls you towards him and him towards you. So it's like being pulled both ways. It's like a rubber band effect almost. You can see they just straight up. They just don't want to have anything to do with me. But uh, I just got to leap towards them and then swing, right? So anyway, this sword is uh, pretty OP. It's pretty OP. It's pretty awesome. And uh, I have to say I enjoy it. Let's go ahead and uh, hunt you down. Uh, Mr. Creeper, you won't run away doesn't work on the creepers. I can't jump towards a rabbit because it's not an undead rabbit. But you get the idea, right? So they just straight up run away from you and uh, they're horrified. Also works on pigmen too, so that's the thing. Yeah, you run. You keep running. You're not getting anywhere. <laughs> so anyway, that's awesome. That's cool. And like I said, we're going to set up the trial and then work towards getting... It's the uh, glitch armor, right? So the glitch armor, this stuff right here. Look at it. It's uh, right here and uh, it's great of flight and uh, really strong armor so we're going to work on getting that next and okay i went ahead and did a little bit of crafting here i went ahead and made the trial keystone so that is super easy right also a bunch of these keys i think i made about five of them right so we have uh right in here some more trial keys and then i have this one here it's actually attuned right so this one says attuned to zombie this one's not it tells you everything that it can be attuned to Basically, you just kill one of those mobs while it's in your inventory. It'll tune there. And basically, if I put it in here right now, let me start a little kind of battle royale um, with uh, with the zombies, right? So that is a thing. And then we'll get some rewards. There you go. It says uh, it's made up of full blocks, also 15 by 15. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That should be good. I just want to build us a little arena because I'm going to use my OP sword, right? And if I don't do this, they're just going to run away. And if they run out of the arena, you actually, or you run out of the arena, I should say, uh, you lose. So <laughs> that's the thing. So that should be good there. That's good there. And uh, we just get this wanted up pretty quickly once it's done. Yeah, this is part of my plan, right? So this sword uh, plus the zombies 
should equal really easy uh, battles. <laughs> it's not particularly hard anyway, but uh, yeah, this is just make it easier. Uh, I'm going to have to make this a little jank. I guess we're going to do that. We're going to break a little bit of our path. I could always come back and fix that later. So that isn't too bad. And uh, we can just do this on our front lawn too. We actually have enough area here. Put it down a few times so I could make sure I could. But uh, yeah, we'll just get this done super easy. It should be a joke with this. Uh, if the zombies are normal zombies, right? And they actually run away from me. I'll just be able to hit them in the back. So that's what I was thinking there. There you go. Maybe one more layer. I guess that's fine there. Let's see if we can still do it. We can. Let's actually start it. It says uh, one wave of four. You can see there, they're actually running away from us, which is awesome. <laughs> we can just use our OP sword. We can even pull them toward us, toward us, just like that. And then get another wave. And this should be super simple. Now, when we get this up to the higher levels, we're going to start getting a better material. And it's called, uh, or I guess it's going to drop uh, material. It's like a uh, glitch hearts or something like that. And with that, we can actually go ahead and actually make our armors and stuff. But uh, you get a fair amount of it. You don't need a ton of it. You also sometimes randomly get the boss in the waves anyway, even the easier ones. But uh, we need to get this, uh, what is it here, the data model. Uh, I should have that up here anyway. Um, up to the higher level, which is uh, self-aware. Once it's that self-aware, we can get that done. So you see there, we only need to kill 6.2 more. We got one more right here. We're going to kill him. Also, whenever you're on your last wave, see there, we got, uh, we're got we on wave three or four. Uh, how many are in this wave? Oh, we got a glitch of work. Oh, no. This is actually bad. Let's go pull this out for a second because I need to make sure I tune another key. But let's uh, do that. There we go. That's actually the material we need right there. And that's actually one of the critters. So we actually got lucky with him. There we go. Let's go ahead and do that. And is this going to go up to the next level in the next hit? It is too. This is actually not good. Uh, will this work? Let's try. I may have tune another key here. Try that. Awesome. There we go. We got up to superior. I need to kill 50 more zombies. But what did that attune to? Oh, this one attuned to a different level, right? So when you make the keys, they tune to a level. So when they start the trial, uh, the trial, this one would do advanced level. I needed one on superior, so we actually get more for it. So that is pretty awesome and uh, really cool. Also, this heart. Uh, left clicking obsidian while holding a corruptor glitch heart to give you three unstable glitch fragments. So we can kind of start the process of getting our ingots here. So let's head down here. Go ahead and hunt down a piece of obsidian. Go ahead and do that. Awesome. Go ahead and uh, just toss that right there. And just left click, right? There you go. And then you do something with this. So it's this stuff plus lapis and gold. Okay, let's go ahead and grab some lapis. I'll just need a few of that. Awesome. And a few pieces of gold. And this should give us the ingots we need. Although we don't have enough yet. Uh, we can at least start the process, right? Of uh, getting us the material. And uh, showing you just basically how I'm doing this, right? So anyway, let's go ahead. Toss that there. There and there. Should get some particles. And uh, once it all combines, there we go. We'll get our first glitch infused ingots. Made by stabilizing unstable glitch fragments. And uh, more info on JAI. Now, usually I would make a sword. Actually, I'm going to make the sword because it makes more, we get much more benefit from doing it. So let's go ahead. Maybe I won't because we got this such this OP sword. I don't think I'm going to, but usually you make this a uh, glitch sword. So you go to a uh, glitch sword, grab that. And uh, when you kill a mob with this sword, you get double the data. But uh, I'm just going to use the normal sword, I think, and just kill a bunch of them because I'm just murderous, <laughs> I guess, is the thing. Anyway, let's grab our two and superior, do another one. Then maybe I'll wait until I'm up to self-aware and then show you that one because that, that's when it's a little different there. Uh, right there, loot hoarders, zombie, that's advanced. Oh, also they get random effects on them. So this one's going to have an effects. You can see there, uh, it fixes. Oh, this one has a chance of getting glitches, so that's good. But also a thunderdome. I think lightning can strike while we do this one. So they can have like random effects while you do the battles. Just a nice, neat little kind of way of doing it, right? So let me drop that there. Go ahead and uh, start the trial. We're going to get 12 pristines for doing this one. So it's actually a good way of uh, farming pristines as well. So that is nice. Go ahead and uh, hunt him down. Do that. <laughs> I love this. This sword is so good. Anyway, we'll get this done. Uh, where is he at? Over there. There you go. Go ahead and grab you. 
Hunt down that guy. Oh, went for the close one. Go grab him. I love the little lunge of the lunge is actually like super kind of legit on it. Anyway, so after we get 41 more, I think we're up to self-aware. Oh, just tried to hit me with lightning. Anyway, I'll be definitely uh, quieting down this clip. That's for sure. But this sword is totally OP and just perfect for the setup here. It wouldn't have mattered if I did this one or the uh, skeletons. It would have been probably just as easy, right? Oh, he's over there. Ah, there you go. Get rid of you. Also, baby zombies have never been easier. Usually, they're such a pain. Anyway, that's good. Oh, why do I have hunger? Uh, that's weird. Let's do that. Didn't notice anything that gave me effect there, unless I ate a piece of rotten flesh and didn't notice. Anyway, that's good. We're on wave five. I need to make sure I pull out a key this time. So let's actually do that. Awesome. I like to pull out... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey. So we got some more me more of the uh, glitch heart, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, you want to pull out your key, but I usually wait to make sure I'm not going to level up the key so I can get a one up to the right level, right? Uh, there's also a much, lot more zombies in this wave, actually. Let's do that. Awesome and awesome. There you go. So that is cool. So we got another pristine. I'm going to go ahead and get this up to self-aware and maybe a little more of this glitch infused. And then, yeah, we'll go ahead and actually make our armor. That actually full up made at night, too. That is really weird that the Thunderdome actually just makes it night. I thought that was just going to be a fact. But anyway, I'll be uh, back in a few. And okay, I'm just uh, doing my second self-aware one now. So I'm just uh, going through it here. So you can see here I have uh, six uh, Corrupted Glitch Hearts. When you do it on self-aware level, it uh, gives you uh, three Glitch Hearts at the end of it. So that is what effectively nine of those uh, all by itself. Also, this one has loot hoarders, so I have these little guys give me weird drops like gold and emerald ore and prismarine and stuff like that, right? So, a little strange how that works. But you can see here the waves are a lot bigger. And uh, if you weren't using a sword like this, it actually is a bit of work, right? Because uh, this one is 10, you know what I mean? The next one would be more than that. Then you have your last level. Plus, of course, you have the chance of spawning in an actual glitch. And uh, if you get one of those, it's a bit of a pain, right? So, anyway. Also, these guys, the hats, the husks. If you fight them in the world, uh, that hat is actually for... You can't drop in here, I don't think. But uh, it is for the archaeolog uh, archaeologist rat. So at some point, I don't know if I have to do that one or not. I think I do if I want to unlock some of the stuff in, uh, later in the mod. But uh, I need a whole bunch of fragment things. And I'm not really sure how to get them yet. So I need to figure that out. But anyway, that's cool. Got 12 more to go in this wave. There's another loot guy. No, that wasn't a loot guy. Maybe it's the one with the... The ones with the gold helmets? Maybe that's the way that works. Anyway, I always got killed by one of the glitch guys, too. One of them spawned in. Got me down to three hearts somehow, but uh, not too bad. But once we get this armor, uh, I'll probably spend some time by myself, I guess, uh, enchanting it. Figuring out what I get on it with books. I don't know what its max level of enchanting is and stuff like that, right? So that's cool. But uh, here we go. We got the last wave, and uh, this one has 20. So that is a thing. And then once we have this, we're done, effectively. I just don't like it when they, like, almost spawn on you. I guess, uh, that's a thing. This one also, too, I think this one had speed, so I'm actually going faster than usual. No, this one doesn't have speed. Must have been the last one I did. It had, uh, speed effects as well. So, that is cool. It actually had three effects on it, so. Anyway, they're a little random, like I said, and the higher they are, I think the more effects they could have on them. But anyway, we're almost done. And then, yeah, we get this uh, armor going, man. It'll be uh, pretty sweet all around. So, yeah, it's really easy. I'm really trivializing it with the sword. The sword's making it ridiculously easy, actually. Uh, the only thing I have to worry about is... Uh, there you go. <laughs> the only thing I have to worry about at all is, uh, yeah, actually fighting the, uh, the glitches themselves when they pop up. But let's go ahead, head inside. Uh, we will need to do this, I suppose. There you go. Here we go. I don't think there's a uh, use for these alone, is there? No, there's not. So might as well just convert it. Here we go. Got 27. Uh, we'll need the matching amount of gold, I suppose. Let's go ahead and uh, make sure we have 27. There you go. That is good. We have more than enough of the agates, which is really nice. And uh, we also need the matching amount of lapis. Let's go ahead and grab that. My inventory is a complete mess, but uh, not too concer concerned, I guess. That, that in that and then we'll just go back to the lake because uh that seems like an easier way to do it to be honest <laughs> let's go run outside 
drop this in the water and uh, get this armor made up because uh, it would be just sweet, man. Uh, we won't effectively need our angel wings anymore, although I may wear them just because I like how they look. <laughs> anyway, here we go. We've got 30 of them. Let's go ahead and uh, craft up some armor here because uh, it should but uh, take a second, man. Anyway, let's go ahead and do that. Probably uh, get rid of you, get rid of you. What else do we need to get rid of that stuff? That stuff right there. Got a ton of the pristines as well, which is nice. Uh, we need uh, armor. I just need to make it. I don't even have to, you know, I was going to say I don't have to Google anything. I don't know what I'm saying here, but I don't even have to JEI anything. But anyway, do that. Go ahead and actually make the thingy of a bob. Do that. And uh, we actually have the helmet. So yeah, we're uh, totally decked out now, actually. Let's uh, pull you off, get our glitch on, and uh, there we go. We actually have a full set of glitch armor, which is uh, really awesome and uh, really cool. And you see there, 18% chance to drop two pristine matter when a data model gains data. So if you're just uh, carrying around your data models and uh, killing any mobs that uh, drop data, you can have a chance of just getting pristine for killing them, flight and immunity to fall damage. So... Really good armor, not too bad, and uh, pretty sweet, actually. So we are pretty decked out now, actually, which is awesome. And uh, we should be able to now, if I pull this out, go ahead and do this and drop you in there, we should still be able to fly. Yeah, we could still fly, no problem at all. So we are set, you know what I mean? We are doing good now, life is great, and uh, we're totally decked out in armor. So that is sweet. Anyway, that is good. And I think I may go ahead and actually wrap this one up here. So, as always, if you guys like this video, please hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button. It is always appreciated. Well, you guys all have a good one. See you guys next video. Later.